Delighted to be joined now by the chair of the Education Select Committee, Robert Halfon, who's a Conservative MP for Harlow. Good morning to you, Robert. Uh, good morning. Um, once again, we're talking about this incredible situation that children are in, where they're basically, most of them are trapped in their homes, unable to see their friends, able to play and able to go to school, uh, trapped on Zoom lessons, if they're lucky. I think the impact on, people are very much focused on the impact on GCSE and A-level students and teenagers, but actually new reports suggest actually the biggest impact of the lockdown has been on primary children. What's interesting actually is, is a new, this new report uh, from researchers from Juniper Education, a software company. They talk about the impact of the pandemic on primary children. It's not the pandemic, it's the lockdown policy that's been a choice of the government. They found that it's the youngest who fared the worst, falling far behind in the basics of the three R's. Um, that, I mean, that is the really big worry, isn't it? Those in year one, they're, they're, they're expect they're, they've fallen by a quarter compared with the fifth and other years. I mean, this is really terrifying. This is going to have a knock on effect for decades. Well, this report that you've just quoted has looked at over a million children and it shows that really we've got a have and have not uh, society in terms of education because it isn't just across the board that young people in primary school have been falling behind hugely in important subjects like maths and English but the impact on children from disadvantaged backgrounds has been massive. The proportion of children on free school meals in year one doing maths at their appropriate age level has fallen by more than 30 uh, percentage points. And that's 10 percentage points more than uh, a non-disadvantaged uh, children. So um, I have been accused of, of catastrophizing the uh, school closure. And I, I talk about these things time and time again, and it's hit hurting our primary schools. It's causing mental health uh, problems to our children, as safeguarding hazards. Uh, and now we know, of course, loss of earnings over their lifetime, according to the respected Institute for Fiscal Studies. So I think it's time that we open the schools. I asked the Prime Minister, I've asked the Secretary of State, given that Public Health England now say that primary schools are safe and that they do not transmit a uh, very low uh, risk of transmission, why not open the primary schools at least after half term oh, and this study open them, shows all the more that they should be open open them tomorrow we know in scotland they're going to be opened up on the 22nd of february um there's no way our primary schools are even going to start to be opened up until the 8th of march that's two weeks after the 22nd of february when the prime minister is going to be we're told uh, making a statement uh, about our exit strategy there isn't one at the moment just so everyone knows there isn't an exit strategy right now but this is it you and i've been talking about this non-stop and even those kids who we think that have had good lessons there are big issues about that as well catherine burble singh I, a, a head teacher i respect hugely hugely started the Michaela Community School. She's taken kids from the on free school meals from sink estates and delivered them, you know, grade nines and grade A stars. She she knows how to deliver teaching. And and we spoke to her during the first lockdown and she said, you know, they were making sure their kids were getting Zoom lessons and, and, and they were keeping up. And she said when she got the kids back into the classroom in September, she was horrified to learn. They'd learned basically about 20 percent of what they'd normally learned. So even the schools that are doing a good job, those kids are not taking that those lessons they are not learning in the same way they're not they're just it's not going into their brains a lot of we i mean we are basically going to have to look at kids going back a whole year at this rate well uh, catherine bells is an extraordinary head teacher i have huge admiration for the michaela school everything i've learned about it but she is right and she also says you can have all the laptops in the world but actually you have to have the children mo uh, opening those yeah. laptops you need the parental support the parents may be at work it may be very difficult for them it's difficult for parents with uh, younger children and what I'd like to see the Prime Minister and the Education Secretary do is create a coalition of the willing working with moderate trade unions like ASK or Jeff Barton you often yeah. have on your programme working with parent groups like us for them who are doing huge amounts to highlight the problems that parents and children are facing and working with those academy chains and local authorities who want to get the schools open and create a big movement so that we whatever happens if we don't open them before which i want obviously but that the schools really open on march the 8th and there's no backsliding absolutely i mean as some uh, tory mps are uh, we're going to be talking to one of those coming up uh, on uh, after eight o'clock that saying no, it needs to be written in blood that this happens this has got to be the start of things but this is the thing i i, I know a lot of children who have come from you know lovely privileged happy middle class homes happily married parents everyone's in a job they've got they've got the broadband they've got great zoom lessons they you know they they are they are ticking every box for everything being fine and they are struggling they are they are you know i i know i know apparently they spoke to this they know three children 
from those sorts of homes who are self-harming now. Children talking about suicide, children talking about having life having no future, children who have now anxiety attacks, depression. I'm not someone who says, I don't think, you know, most children have mental health problems. I think we need to preach resilience and robustness and frankly getting on with it and having a, a glass half full attitude. I, I think that we are, we, I think we are breaking our children. I, I really worry that we are sacrificing an entire generation of young people, millions of young people for saving older people. Now, I'm not saying those lives aren't worth saving. I just think the cost right now to our children uh, is so high that we are making the wrong calculation. How do we get that message through to the people on SAGE, people on Nerve Tag, the, the health secretary, oh. the, the, the prime minister, that the cost is now too high to our children? Well, this is the the bizarre thing because the, a nerve tag advisor uh, put out a statement on uh, Twitter a few days ago saying that it's vital that schools go back. The uh, deputy chief medical officer came to our committee two or three weeks ago and said uh, the risks of there was no big evidence about risks of transmission uh, from uh, schools opening, and yet the schools aren't open. Public Health England have said. Um, that the primary schools are safe uh, to open. So even the official scientists are now saying the school should open. And yet um, the school was were waiting till uh, the 8th of March. And I mentioned that I've been accused of catastrophizing this. And you talk about mental health, eating disorders amongst young people up by 400 percent because of school closures and social isolation since uh, the first lockdown. I mean, that is horrific. And uh, young people, this is not about young people being snowflakes it's no. because they're being damaged because they're not able to socialize. They're not able to go out. They're not able even to now they're not even able to go to playgrounds in some local authorities. The playgrounds are shut, even though the official yeah. so advice these, is that they sorry, should be these, open. Robert, these people are psychopaths. It's as simple as that. Anyone who's doing this to these children, I mean, they, 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 they can't pretend that the evidence isn't there, that what they are doing is now damaging uh, uh, our, our children. I, I don't know any any society that puts the puts makes children pay the penalty uh, for, for any policy. I'm sorry, it is a society I don't want to live in. Robert Halford, I can't thank you enough. And I know my listeners will feel the same way. Way. work you are doing to try and make sure that schools go back and that children get what they need you, you have been one of the heroes of this and, and and history will remember you on that basis Robert